Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Let's start with IELTS reading. Academic reading passage 1. Academic reading is more like a nightmare. You know what is nightmare? You are sleeping and suddenly ah. Okay? Uh, so academic reading is more like a nightmare, but let me tell you academic reading is full of information. I have learned so many things from these passages and it has improved my general knowledge, my scientific knowledge, my social knowledge and all that. So once you start taking interest, you will find it interesting, right? So that will not be done in one test. I mean, if you solve one test every day, after 10 days, you will say, oh, it's good. I'm enjoying it. Same is the case with listening. Initially, you don't like it, but then sometimes, you know, they do some funny things also in the audio. So you start enjoying that. And then their accent, their English, native English uh, is quite soothing for your ears. So you like that. Okay. Anyways, let's start. Whenever you start your reading passage, you have to start it with the title. What's the title here? Alexander Henderson, 1831 to... Now, whenever the title of the passage is the name of a person, it means it's going to be biography. Biography is the life story of any famous person. Got it? So we've got the title and we don't know who is Alexander, right? And all that. Oh, Alexander is going to be a boy. So next, they have given us uh, a subtitle. Subtitle says, born in Scotland. Henderson uh, immigrated to Canada in 1855 and became a well-known landscape. So Hen Henderson was a photographer. We are going to learn the autobiography of a photographer. If he's written it himself, then it is autobiography. Otherwise, it is his biography. All clear? Okay, right after this, you are going to go to the questions. And you need to see the questions. Now, can you guys see questions 1 to 8? Yes. Taru? False? Not, not given. Okay. <laughs> True, false, not given. Now, the good news is in academic reading part 1, you will almost always get type A questions. Type A questions means where questions and answers in the passage, they are in the same order. So, order is going to be same. True, false, not given questions 1 to 8. And what about questions 9 to 13? What is that? Complete the notes below. Notes completion. Any completion type of questions, they are also type A questions. Means questions and answers in the passage, they are in the same order. So for these two type of questions, like true, false, not given and all that, once you find one answer, then you read on and on and on. Read on means maybe sometimes it's the next line. Sometimes it's the next paragraph. Sometimes you skip a paragraph and go on. So from the question, whenever you read the question, from the question, you have to find a clue word. What will you do? First, you read the question. From the question, you will find a clue word. Next, you're not going to read. You're going to scan. You're going to scan that clue word in the passage. Where is that word? Where is, and now you're not reading. You're searching. You're just searching, looking around and all that. Okay, let's do one exercise. Please come to title page. Title page. Title page. Got it? Now look for October 1855. October 1855. October 1855. Now, did you read to find October 1855? What did you do? Scan. scan. This is what we call scanning. Let's do another one. Please uh, scan Canadian views and studies. Canadian views and studies. Canadian views and studies. Okay. Second last line of the passage, Canadian views and studies. Now, please look for the word press castle. Press castle, press castle, press castle, press castle. Scanning, 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 scanning. All right, you found it. Very good. Now, kindly look for the word scientific method. Come on, come on, scientific method. Very good. Come on, be quick. Scientific method, scientific method, scientific method, scientific method, scientific method. Not there. It's not there. Okay. Yes. So I just said it on my own, right? This word is not given there. So you should be careful. Don't be frustrated if you're not finding a word. Okay. 
Now, let's start. Question number one. In true false not given, if you guys understand the question, you will find the answer. That's it. If you understand the question. And finding the answer means answer is true, false, or not given. All the trickery is in the question. Okay? There is a certain way of making the question. Let's, uh, I tell you what is that. Question number one. Henderson rarely. Now the words, adverbs are very, very important. In circle, rarely. Rarely means seldom. Okay? Henderson rarely visit the area around press estate when he was younger. Now look at me. What is the clue word in this sentence? Press estate. Okay, listen now. Listen. Wait, 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 wait. Please follow me first. Then you go back and find the answer. Press estate is the clue word. You'll find it easily. Now, if Henderson rarely visited the area, answer is true. If he often visited the area, answer is and if they don't tell us the frequency, rarely or often, then answer is? Oh, yeah. Now, have you noticed one thing? This one word is going to decide the answer. Now, let's go back. First paragraph, press state, found it? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm reading it from uh, fourth line. Beside its residence in Edinburgh, it owned press estate, 650 acres of farmland. Everyone with me? Yes. Excellent. About 35 miles southeast of the city, the family often stayed uh, at Press Castle, the large mansion on the northern edge of the property. And Alexander spent much of his childhood in the area. What's the name of the area? Press Castle. Now they have changed it. They did not tell anything about Press Estate. They said Press Castle. Alexander spent much of his childhood in the area. Now come back to the question. Henderson rarely visit the area around Press Estate. Okay, let's go back. When he was younger. When he was younger means in his childhood. So what will be the answer? No, it is false actually. Why? Uh, let's read it from fourth line again. Besides its residence in Edinburgh, it owned Press Estate. Now focus Press Estate. 650 acres of farmland, about 35 miles southeast of the city. The family often stayed at Press Castle. Press Castle is a place which is located at Press Estate. This is what you need to understand, okay? The large mansion on the northern edge of the property, and now this is Press Castle is the large mansion on the northern edge of the property. So Press Castle is the part of Press Estate. Next, and Alexander spent much of his childhood in the area. So Alexander spent much of his childhood in Press Castle, which is the part of Press Estate. And in the question, they say Henderson rarely visited. No, he spent his childhood there. That is why answer is false. Clear? Okay, now these two words, press estate and press castle. Press estate is the whole area and press castle is the part of it. Yes. Question number two, Henderson pursued a business career. Now, focus, Henderson pursued a business career because whenever they give you the word because in true, false, not given, you have to look for the reason. If the reason is same, answer is true. true. If the reason is different, answer is and if they don't give that reason, then it is not given. So he pursued a business career because it was what his family wanted. Now listen, look here. If it was because of his family, he pursued a business career. Answer is? If he wanted to become a businessman against the will of his family. False. And if they don't tell us why did he become a businessman, then it is not given. Now business and family and all that. Please come to... The word business career, clue word is business career, second paragraph. Yes, we read it from third line. Although he never liked the prospect of business career, he stayed with it, with it. What do they mean by it? Business career to please his Exactly. Now come back to the question. Henderson pursued a business career because it was what his family wanted. Answer is false. 
एब्सोल्युटली ट्रू ओके तो झटका दिया थोड़ा सा ये दोज हु आर ओवर कॉन्फिडेंट इट्स फॉर देम ऑल क्लियर गुड नाउ यू सी व्हाट टू फोकस व्हेन एवर इन ट्रू फॉल्स नॉट गिवन दे यूज द वर्ड बिकॉज यू हैव टू फॉलो दिस क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री हैंडसन एंड नोट मैन वर सरप्राइज इन सर्कल द वर्ड सरप्राइज एंड वट इज दिट ऑफ सरप्राइज they'd expected no opposite they'd expected something for example i was surprised to see the party i was expecting the party all right so henderson and noteman were surprised by the results of their 1865 experiment now listen 1865 experiment is your clue word so you go there and if they were surprised about the results answer is true if they were not surprised they were expecting the results answer is and if they don't tell us their expression whether they were surprised or not then it is not given so let's go back 1865 found it good it's third paragraph now see that scanning will take you to the part of the passage when you say i cannot manage my time you do a lot of extra reading okay you read a paragraph and then you realize answer is not here then you read another paragraph then you realize answer is not here this is where you lose your precious minutes and all that okay let's read it i'm reading it from noteman and this uh, let's start it from uh, second line he became a personal friend and colleague of the scottish canadian photographer william noteman the two men made a photographic excursion to niagara falls in 1860 and they cooperated on experiments with magnesium flares as a source of artificial light in 1865 they belonged to the same societies and were among the founding members of art and all that now about their experiments have they told us anything that they were surprised or they were not surprised no what will be the answer well done excellent please underline these sentences and write question number there so that when you go back you can take a look again and you'll be fine with it okay question number 4 there were many similarities underline many good see that now you understand what to check sometimes it's only word and this word can be as simple as all in the question they write all in the passage they write few what will be the answer false right if in the question all and in the passage they also say all then it is true so there were many similarities between henderson's early landscapes and those of noteman now if there were similarities answer will be true otherwise false or not given okay fourth paragraph first line in spite of their friendship their styles of photography were now quite different is the opposite of many similarities that is why answer is well done sabko samajh aa rahi na hey i'm surprised sabko samajh aa rahi hai na ye yeah, i'm surprised mashallah good aaj na apna sadka din hai theek hai koi 10 20 50 rupaye ki cheez aise aise karke na to baad mein kha lijiyega okay let's go on Question number five: Studio that Henderson opened in 1866. What's the clue word? 1866 and studio. The studio that Henderson opened in 1866 was close to his home. Now look here, look here, look here. If the studio was close to his home, answer is true. If it was far from his home, answer is false. And if they don't tell us near, far, wherever you are, I believe that the heart does go on. Once more, you open the door. You know Titanic song? Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, now let's see just this thing: close or far? Uh, studio found it. Second page of the passage, and we have first line. In 1866. he gave up his business to open a photographic studio advertising himself as a portrait and landscape photographer from about 1870 he dropped a portraiture to specialize in landscape photography oh. 
not given and by the way in order to decide not given it's not that you read on and on and on haje aayega haje aayega not like this because they talked about studio they talked about the year and there is only one sentence you have to match with the question to decide whether the answer is true false or not given and don't be over confident we have the next passage is very very complicated and confusing okay but if you start well it will help help you maintain good level okay let's go on question number 6 henderson gave up portraiture gave up means left yeah henderson gave up portraiture so that he could focus on taking photographs of scenery now if he left portraiture for scenery answer is true or if he gave up scenery for portraiture answer is false. false and otherwise not given now look for portraiture scenery and all that second line of same paragraph from about 1870 he dropped portraiture what does it mean he gave up exactly he dropped portraiture to specialize in landscape, landscape. what will be the answer true. not given एक्सेलेंट वेरी गुड चोर फरना सी है कोई लिख के बैठा होगा नॉट गिवन भी यू नो वाई नॉट गिवन क्योंकि मुझे नहीं मिला सो आंसर इज ट्रू एंड वट इज द वर्ड फॉर गेव अप ड्रॉप्ड राइट दे ऑल आई मीन द लैंग्वेज ऑफ क्वेश्चन एंड द लैंग्वेज ऑफ पैसेज टू लैंग्वेजेस आर डिफरेंट इन वर्डिंग सिमिलर इन मीनिंग एब्सोल्यूटली अभी तो नींद नहीं आनी चाहिए हाँ ओके लेट्स गो ऑन When Henderson began work for the intercolonial railway the Montreal to Halifax line had been now listen he worked for railway and when they are talking about line it's the railway line if the line had finished answer is true if the line was still under construction false, false. okay so this is what you have to check and if they don't tell us whether the line had finished or it was still under construction then it is not given so please look for henderson's last work jump to the last paragraph usually these type of things are at the end second last paragraph and the clue word is montreal sorry sorry uh, not the last paragraph it's yeah montreal to halifax so it's the third last paragraph Can you see the word intercolonial railway? Okay now listen it's the third last paragraph and look for the word intercolonial railway found it yes. Okay now I'm going on this undertaking led in 1875 all of you found it yes. Good to a commission from the railway to record the principal structure along the almost completed line almost completed what does it mean almost completed and on the other hand they use the word finished now almost completed and finished are they same no, no. almost completed means still work was undone so the answer is false now have you noticed one thing we only matched almost completed with finished and these two words are opposite that is why answer is false Question number 8 Henderson's last work as a photographer was with Canadian Pacific Railway clue word is Canadian Pacific Railway last work last paragraph CPR Canadian Pacific Railway second last paragraph last line he continued in this post found it that was his last job he continued in this post until 1897 when he retired completely from photography so he completed this post now what do they mean by this post that was the post of cpr canadian pacific railway and they've mentioned that so what will be the answer true absolutely henderson's last work as a photographer last work means he retired so when they use the word uh, they use the word here he continued this post until 1897 when he retired so when he retired it means it was his last work so the answer is true okay so you need to practice more and again i tell you when you read the question you need to identify a word or a phrase which is going to decide whether the answer is going to be true false or not given good 
all right guys now we go on uh, we've got complete the notes below uh, remember there are three type of questions maybe four i don't know anyways notes completion summary completion table completion sentence completion all four types are almost same they follow the same pattern questions and answers in the passage they are in order okay so don't worry whether it is even map completion for that also diagram completion in ielts reading we do have diagram completion so they follow the same order as well now title is alexander henderson and they use the word early life okay was born in scotland in 1831 father was now the profession of his father let's go back 1831 first line son of a successful merchant so son of a now check their mindset the language of questions and the language of passage father was a dash son of a merchant so it means his father was a merchant well done correct answer is merchant and they've mentioned one word only when it is one word only you will not write even a merchant and by the way a is already written so correct answer is merchant all good to everyone yeah son of a merchant and his father was a merchant let's go on after that you can see there are few things which are without any question 1866 then we have uh, this uh, second last option here uh, i'm reading the third bullet point by the way people bought henderson's photos because photography took up considerable time and the dash was heavy now look here look here for heavy they are going to use a couple of things either they will use the word weight or they will use the word 200 kg 500 kg 1 ton or anything like that so look for something that was heavy and we go on where you found the answer of question number 9 you need to go on and and see there are some bullet points without question so you need to move on second page exactly thank you all right look for the word weight thank you jazakallah look for the word weight okay so it's the th fourth last line have you found it okay now please follow me i'm going to read it from 1880s mil gaya sabko uh agar aapke daaye baaye dekhein kisi ko nahi mila to usko bataye athei yeah 1880s because of the time consuming techniques involved and the weight of equipment. now look here weight of equipment means equipment was heavy, heavy. so what is the answer equipment. equipment well done weight of equipment and equipment was heavy and every time you do ielts reading you have to say it like this weight of equipment equipment of ha was heavy son of a merchant father was merchant exactly so answer is equipment and be careful with your spelling in reading you should never have spelling mistakes you know why the words are written in the passage okay if you still do spelling mistakes they they are going to be your careless mistakes question number 11 the photographs henderson sold were dash or souvenirs look for the word souvenirs photographs henderson sold same paragraph and second last line okay i'm reading it from people wanted to buy now listen listen photos henderson sold people wanted to buy now for example if i buy something you sell it it means that right so sold and buy they've used it, this trick here people wanted to buy photographs as souvenirs okay one thing of a trip or now after or you have your answer as gifts and catering to this market okay photos uh, or souvenirs uh, of a trip or as gifts and catering to this market now come back they use the word souvenirs so the photographs henderson sold were gifts or souvenirs is already written so correct answer is going to be gifts okay let's go on traveling as a professional photographer and can you see 1870 and 1880s yes. 
Ontario, Quebec, your destinations in future, inshallah, by the grace of Almighty Allah. Canadian destinations, your destinations too, okay? So, anyways, now 1870 and 1880s, find, find it, please. It's the third last paragraph. So, it's a very good idea from the question, look for clue word. Don't read the question, look for clue word. Go back to the passage, mark the clue word. Come back to the question, read the question again with clear understanding. Now, let's read it. Uh, okay, question number 12. Took many trips along eastern rivers. In a, in a means mode of transportation for river, for water. Now let's go back. Mode of transportation for river. I'm reading it from the beginning. In 1870s and 80s, Henderson traveled widely throughout Quebec and Ontario in Canada. Uh, documenting the major cities of two provinces and many of the villages in Quebec. He was especially fond of wilderness and often traveled by canoe on the Blanche du Lièvre and other noted eastern rivers. Now, what does it mean? It means this Blanche is the name of our river and canoe is exactly mode of travel. So the answer is... Now, if you don't know what the canoe is, just go to YouTube or Google, write canoe, and you'll find it, right? Don't do any spelling mistake. Huh? Otherwise, you'll find other things, okay? So, correct answer is canoe. C-A-N-O-E. Copy-pasting. Exactly the same. All right. Last question, 13. Worked for CPR. You know CPR, Canadian Pacific Railway in 1885 and photographed the dash and the railways at Roger Pass. Roger's Pass. Look for Roger's Pass. He took photos of two things. Photographed the dash and the railway. Okay, let's come to Roger Pass. Where is Roger Pass? Okay, it's the third last paragraph. And third last line. We read from there. Okay, let's read it from third last line. In 1885. Found it? Yes. In 1885, he went west along the Canadian Pacific Railway as far as Rogers Pass in British Columbia, where he took photographs of the mountains and the progress of... And what were they constructing? Railways. They were constructing the railways. So for progress of construction, they use the word here, railways, uh, uh, at the railway. And around, uh, along with that, he took the photos of mountains. So mountains will be the right answer. Okay? Har cheez unko na pinch karti hai. Okay, guys. Let's go on. Wow. <sighs> Second passage now. Get ready for it. Second passage. Back to the future of skyscraper design. So they are going to talk about skyscraper design. Skyscraper means tall building. A skyscraper. Very tall building. Like we've got Arfa Karim Tower, a 200-story building in Lahore. Okay. So anyways, anyways, skyscraper means a tall building. There are many tall buildings in Lahore you might have seen. So back to the future of skyscraper design. Back to the future of skyscraper design. They're going to talk about the design of skyscraper and back to the future. They're going to go back how they were and what is going to happen in the future. Answers to the problem of excessive electricity used by skyscrapers and large public buildings can be found in ingenious but forgotten architectural designs of the 19th and early 20th century. So they are going to tell us about past. Which century is this? Now. Now 21st century is going on. So they are going to talk about 19th and 20th. It means they will tell us about the history of skyscrapers and mainly electricity use and some other stuff like that. Okay, after that we'll come to the questions. Hmm. 11 to 16. Reading passage 2 has 9 sections. How many? Nine. Don't say it like this. Say 9 Okay, whenever passage is labeled A, B, C, D, trouble is waiting for you. And that trouble is what we call type B questions, where questions and answers are never in order. For one question, you have to scan all the passage. 
For second question, you have to scan all the passage. Okay. So always try to do type B questions at the end of the very passage. Right. Not in the beginning. Otherwise, your brain will be drained. Okay. Questions 14 to 16, which paragraph contains the following information? One thing you guys can do if you want to. But questions are so tricky that they slip out of your mind. You can just read questions 14 to 18 and underline the words. For example, question number 14, uh, 19th century. Question number 15, tall building and prestige. Tall building and prestige. See that uh, Eiffel Tower is the tallest, uh, very tall. So it shows the prestige of French people and all that. Uh, 16, comparison between circulation, so comparison, and 19th century circulation. Question number 17, short tested, short is the name, tested circulation and 19th century. And question number 18, uh, advertising. Just underline the word advertising, increase of use of air conditioning. Advertising, air conditioning, and all that. So when you find, because you know, by chance, you will find these answers. When you're doing other question type, by chance, you will come across. So if you read the questions first, or at least you visualize these words, so it will click you when the answer is going to come. Now we come to questions 19 to 26. Wow, this test is good. You know why good? 19 to 26 means seven questions complete the summary below. And the good news is, Type A, questions and answers are in the same order in the passage, okay? So let's see. Choose one word only. Now we are going to start from questions 19 to 26. Okay, choose one word only from the passage for each answer. Ventilation in 19th century hospital wards. And then they use the word Professor Ellen Short. Let's go back. We look for P Professor Ellen Short and ventilation in 19th century hospitals. Professor Ellen Short, ventilation in 19th century hospitals. Paragraph. Okay. Uh, exactly, it's paragraph D that talks about ventilation in 19th century hospitals. Got it? If you read the first line, you'll be clear about it, yes, right? So let's go on to the question. Now, please come back to questions. We read question number 19. Professor Ellen Short examined the work of John Shaw Billings, who influenced, now these are the names, work of John Shaw Billings, who influenced the architectural dash of hospitals to ensure they had good ventilation. Architectural dash of hospitals. Architectural dash of hospitals. And if you know, uh, yeah, let's go back. We are going to read it from there, 19th century earlier. I'm reading it uh, from paragraph D. Short's book highlights a developing and sophisticated art of science of ventilating building through the 19th and earlier 20th centuries, including the design of ingeniously ventilized hospitals. Of particular interest were those built to the designs of John Shaw Billings. Right? And if you come to the next paragraph, we spent three years digitally modeling Billings final designs. Now let's come back. Professor Ellen Short examined the work of John Shaw Billings, who influenced the architectural dash of hospital, architectural design, design of hospitals to uh, ensure they had good ventilation. Now, what's the word? Yeah, ventilation is there. For that, they use the word ventilating. Okay, all good. Paragraph D. And one more thing, we call it... Uh, uh, natural English, uh, the words that come to collocations, collocations. Now, one thing I tell you, if you go through collocations, collocations are a group of words that come together. Okay. So if you know collocations, you know it already architectural design. Okay. In collocations with architectural, we usually use the word design. Anyways, correct answer is design. Now, please focus question number 20. He calculated that. Focus the word calculated. And they might use any other word. He calculated that dash in the air coming from patients suffering from. Suffering from means the name of 
disease. So he calculated something which came from the patients who were suffering from a disease. Now let's go back. Please come to this uh, paragraph D, second part. Paragraph D, second part. We spent three years digitally modeling billing final design, says short. We put patho uh, pathogens in the airstream modeled for someone with tuberculosis coughing in the wards and we found the ventilation system in the room would have kept other patients safe from harm. Now what did they do? We put pathogens in the airstream modeled for someone with tuberculosis. Now come back to the question. He calculated that pathogens in the air and these pathogens came from patients suffering from and how were the pathogens coming from through their cough because TB patients they cough a lot so when they were coughing in the air there were pathogens so he calculated that pathogens in the air coming from patients suffering from and by the way can you see over there for tuberculosis they have written TB so you can write full word tuberculosis or you can write TB both answers will be fine correct yeah, <laughs> I told you. Let's go on. Question number 22. He also found that the air dash, uh, the air in dash in hospitals. Now, look, air in dash in hospitals means it's the part of hospital. Answer is going to be part of hospital. Could change as often as in a modern operating theater. So let's go back. Please go on to paragraph E. We discovered that 19th century, paragraph E, yes, paragraph E. Uh, for he also found that. What is the word for he also found that? Yeah, he says we discovered that. Now, when he's talking, he's saying we discovered. When they are making a question, they say he found it out. So, he discovered that 19th century hospital wards could generate up to 24 air changes. Hospital wards means in dash in hospital. In dash in hospital means in wards in hospital. Now, have you noticed their technique? Hospital wards. In dash in hospital. So, it means in wards in the hospital. So, answer is wards. Okay, now we go on. Question number 23. He suggests that energy use could be reduced by locating more patients in dash areas. Now, more patients in dash areas means type of areas. If they put more patients there, he suggests that energy use could be reduced by locating more patients in dash areas. Same uh, paragraph E, second part. Or section E, second paragraph. Single rooms are not appropriate for all patients. Communal wards appropriate for certain patients, older people with dementia, for example, would work just as well in today's hospitals. So, communal wards. Now, tell me one thing. What is the word for wards? Areas. Well done. Areas is for wards and communal is the right answer. Okay, every time you do reading, do it like this, match it, read it again, go back again to the question and passage and all that. Now you see, we have a separate paragraph. So if there are two separate paragraphs, then you need to go to two different locations of the passage. Sometimes there are three paragraphs, sometimes only one paragraph. Sometimes each question is a different paragraph. It's like that as well. Okay, question number 24. A major reason for improving ventilation in 19th century hospitals was the demand from the dash for protection against bad air. Now, demand from means type of people, type of, yeah, demand from. So, major reason for improving ventilation in 19th century hospital was the demand from the dash for protection against bad air known as name of bad air that is question number 25 so please come to paragraph f good 
Let's read paragraph F together. See that answers are going on systematically. Much of the ingenuity present in 19th century hospital and building design was driven by a panicked public. Driven by means demand from? Now, it's one word only. So can you write panicked public? No, you will write only public. Exactly. So answer is? public for protection against bad air and what is the name of that bad air let's read on a uh, clamoring for buildings that could protect against what was thought to be the lethal threat of miasmus toxic air now listen miasmus and then they have mentioned toxic air so this hyphen means they have described the word right they use the word miasmus and hyphen toxic air so uh, answer is going to be and what is the word for toxic Bad, absolutely. Unless you concentrate this much, IELTS reading will become difficult for you. So answer is miasmus. And it's a bad air. Okay, last question. These were blamed for the spread of disease <clears throat> for hundreds of years, including epidemics of dash in London. Answer is one epidemic in London. Go on. Read the same paragraph. Dash outbreak in London. Outbreak means epidemic. Absolutely. Paragraph F, third last line. And you can see right through the cholera outbreak in London. So what is the word for outbreak? Epidemic. epidemic. Now you know what will some people do? They will reach there and they will write answer as uh, uh, outbreak. And then they'll be very confident. I found the answer. Okay, they don't know and this is what they do deliberately. They want to see whether you know that epidemic and outbreak, they are similar words. So answer is cholera. All right, that's good. Turush, remember reading se bhaap ta ta. Bacche bacche se koi question karte ta na, mein kata ta, khudhi dekh lo bhai, mujhe nahi pata. Kyunke mein ne koi test solve hi nahi kiya ta. Aur zyada tar aids ke jo teacher hai na, agar hum se reading ke question karenge na, ghabra aenge. उनके हाथ पांव कांपेंगे क्योंकि वो प्रैक्टिस खुद से नहीं करते अभी मैंने जब से खुद से टेस्ट सॉल्व किए एक टेस्ट दो तीन अभी मैंने कितनी बुक सेवन से लेकर सेवनटीन तक सारी सॉल्व कर ली और टेस्ट कर रहा तो आई एंजॉय अ लॉट मज़ा आता है अच्छा ये और फिर वही चीज़ें रिपीट हो रही हैं बार बार ये जो आपको टिप्स दे रहा हूँ ना ये आम तौर पर हर टेस्ट में वही उसी तरह की सिमिलर चीज़ें जब आप लोग आठ दस टेस्ट सॉल्व कर लेंगे तो आपको भी फिर मज़ा आएगा फिर जैसे आपने कोई चीज़ खा रहे होते हैं तो मैं ऐसे ऐसे टेस्ट करता हूँ सॉल्व ठीक है एग्जैक्टली तो आप लोग कैसे सॉल्व करते हैं इट्स डिफरेंट वन चलिए स्टार्ट करें तो मैं मशहूर करेंगे काका ओके अच्छा जी नाउ वी गो बैक टू विच पैराग्राफ कंटेन्स द फॉलोइंग इनफॉर्मेशन ये आर राइट so let's start okay now over here you have to scan the passage wildly i mean now your scanning thing is going to work out and when you scan you don't read listen now i give you some nice tips what you need to do you need to read the question and you should be crystal clear what you are looking for how sometimes you will find the direct word otherwise mostly you will find the synonyms only so sometimes it is an idea they use the word description they use the word experiment so you're looking for an experiment you're looking for a description you're looking for a statement you're looking for something like that so when you read the question if you're clear about it you will just find it question number 14 why some people avoided hospitals in the 19th century you know that bad air toxin air and all that so why some people avoided hospitals in the 19th century which paragraph contains this information f you know the word panicked public clamoring for building that could protect against was and where is the word people avoided going to the hospital yes they use the word hospital fever uh paragraph f second last line please come to that the main driver of hospital fever what is hospital fever people were afraid of going to the hospital you know exam fever hospital fever exam fever school fever okay so hospital fever and why people avoided going to the hospitals 
in 19th century. So what is the answer for question number 14? F. Okay, question number 15. A suggestion that popularity of tall buildings is linked to prestige. Now look for tall building and prestige. And they might use another word for prestige. Tall building can be skyscrapers. Tall building and prestige. Tall building and prestige. Tall building and prestige. Come on. Symbol of status means prestige. Symbol of status. Tall building is skyscrapers. Now look for it. Skyscrapers as symbols of status. Skyscrapers as symbol of status. Dhunde and dhunde har jaga dekhe. Skyscrapers as symbol of status. Absolutely. Paragraph C, second last line. Please follow me. Short regards glass, steel, and air conditioned skyscrapers as symbols of status. Now, what is the word for symbol of status? Prestige. And what is the word for skyscrapers? Tall buildings. Got it? So, in which paragraph contains the following information? They check this thing. For question number 15, answer is C. Question number 16, a comparison between the circulation of air in the 19th century building and modern. Look here, past tense and present tense. 19th century building, for that they will use past tense. And modern building, for that they will use the word present. Look for the word present and past in one paragraph. Go back, search. Yes, and they use the word, we discovered and then they use the word 19th century, and then they use the word now, it's paragraph E. Now, everyone, please come to paragraph E. We discovered that 19th century hospital wards could generate up to 24 air changes an hour. Which tense is it? Past, Past tense. And which, which century is that? And what's the question? Come back to the question. A comparison between the circulation of air in 19th century building and? Modern. Now, I tell you what is modern standards. Let's read on. An hour. That's similar to the performance of a modern-day modern computer-controlled operating theater. So, what is this? It's a comparison. It's a comparison of 19th century building with the modern one. So, for question number 16, answer is? Good. Question number 17. How short tested the circulation of air in a 19th century building? How short tested? Short circulation of air, 19th century building. How short tested the circulation of air in a 19th century building? Who said D? Okay, where is it? Yes, absolutely. How he tested? We put pathogens in the air stream modeled for someone with tuberculosis coughing in the ward and we found the ventilation, ventilation system in the room would have kept other patients safe from harm. So this is how he tested. Right? They have described the process. So whenever they use the word how, how short tested, you need to look for a process. Question number 18. An implication that advertising led to the large increase in the use of? Now listen, for advertising, they might use the word marketing. Marketing and air conditioning. These two are your clue words. Look for them. Marketing and air conditioning. Marketing and air conditioning. Marketing and air conditioning. Marketing and air conditioning. Okay. It's paragraph B. Right? 
and you can see both words in the second uh, i mean we don't call it paragraph b we call it section b and how many paragraphs are there in section b two paragraphs so we call it section okay uh, all right please come to second paragraph of section b and i'm reading it from third line introduction of air conditioning systems which were relentlessly and aggressively marketed by their inventors so what is the question an implication that advertising led to the large increase in the use of air conditioning now tell me where have they mentioned large increase in the use widespread Okay, if you read it from before, uh, he shows it is entirely possible to accommodate natural ventilation and cooling in large buildings by looking into the past before the widespread, yeah, the wi world widespread introduction of air conditioning system. So widespread, large increase in the use. Widespread and large increase in the use, they are synonyms. So for question number 16, what is the answer? B for boy. 14, what is the answer? F. 15, C, 16, E, 17, D, and 18, that's right, B for boy. Okay, guys, now we have reading passage 3. Get ready. Ah, list of heading. I like list of headings very much because you can put them anywhere. Okay, don't worry. So, uh, title of the passage, Why Companies Should Welcome... Disorder, you know disorder. So why should companies welcome disorder? This title suggests that they are going to talk about disorder in the companies and why companies should welcome. If there is a disorder in the company, they should welcome because they may learn something new, something different and all that. So why companies should welcome disorder? Now, can you see questions 27 to 34? They are... Which list of headings? And you can see the passage is labeled A, B, C, D. And uh, they have used the word, reading passage 3 has eight sections. When they use the word section, in one section there can be more than one paragraph. Now tell me how many paragraphs do we have in section A? Three. Three. Section B? Two. C, D, E? One. one. Section F? G, three. three paragraphs. H, one. one paragraph. Okay? So you need to consider all the paragraphs. Now, we've got list of headings and there are several questions. Now, list of headings is type B questions. Right? You can start with list of headings, but actually, these questions are eight questions? Nine questions? Okay, eight questions. On the other hand, if you come to... Questions 35 to 37. What is that? One word only. Questions 38 to 40? True, false. True, false. No. And both are type A. A questions. So it's a very... Because, you know, by the time you finish list of headings, you know what will happen? Five minutes left. Maximum, Sade Panj. <laughs> okay? So then you will try to do it. And uh, when you do list of headings, it's overly complicated and confusing sometimes. So it's a very good idea to start from uh, one word only. Then you should do true, false, not given. And by the time you come to list of headings, you will be familiar with the passage. And at the end, you can do that. Okay? Now, let's start. Questions 35 to 37. Complete the sentences below. Question type is sentence completion. Choose one word only. All right. One word only. Sentence completion. Question number 35. And one more thing. Usually, now always remember this thing. Usually when they give you sentence completion with one word only in part one uh, and some, sometimes part one, usually the answers are in the beginning. Beginning means the first paragraph, sometimes second paragraph, or at best they start from third paragraph. So you need to start scanning from the first paragraph. Question number 35. Numerous training sessions are aimed at people who feel that they are not dash enough. Now it's the feeling of people. People who feel that 
they are not dash enough. They are not good enough. They are not whatever. Now let's come back. First paragraph, numerous training sessions. Numerous training sessions are for people who think they are not good enough. I'm reading it from paragraph A. So I'm reading second paragraph of A. We have more strategies, time management, project management, and self. What is that? Time management, project management. What is that? Numerous training, training sessions. Let's read on. Then at any of other time in human history, we are told that we ought to organize our company, our home life, our week, our day, and even our sleep, all as a means to become more means to become more productive means people who don't feel that they are enough now for enough they have used the word productive enough more productive productive enough more productive so enough and more they are synonyms correct answer here is productive question number 36 being organized appeals to people who regard themselves as who regard themselves as means who think about themselves as right being organized appeals to people who regard themselves as very next paragraph of a this rhetoric has also crept into the thinking of business leaders and entrepreneurs much to the delight of self-proclaimed perfectionist now listen self self proclaimed means people who regard themselves you know sometimes a self proclaimed ielts guru <laughs> you know what is that main ielts guru hu main aapko aise aise tips dunga ki aapki neende haram ho jayengi okay something like that so we call them self proclaimed self proclaimed means who regard themselves and answer is perfectionist ओके हंसते रहे हंसना नहीं छोड़ना रीडिंग में कुछ भी हो रहा हो हंसना नहीं छोड़ना मुन्ना भाई एम बी बी एस ये यू गॉट टू स्माइल सो गॉट इट सेल्फ प्रोक्लेम्ड उस व्हाट इज द वर्ड फॉर दैट रिगार्ड एज एन आंसर इज परफेक्शनिस्ट ऑल राइट क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी सेवन मैनी पीपल फील डैश विद अस्पेक्ट ऑफ देयर वर्क नाउ फीलिंग ऑफ पीपल विद अस्पेक्ट ऑफ देयर वर्क many people feel dash with aspects of their work it's the feeling of people with aspects of their work dissatisfied sure okay please come to paragraph b paragraph b many people feel dash with uh, aspects of their work so paragraph b ironically however the number of businesses that fail has also steadily increased work related stress has increased a large proportion of and what is the word for this many people got it large proportion and many people they are synonyms a large proportion of workers from all demographics claim to be now claim to be means many people feel for feel they have used claim to be claim to be if i say i claim to be unhappy i feel unhappy right claim to be dissatisfied with aspects of their work now tell me what is the phrase for with aspects of their work with the way their work is structured and the way they are managed got it so answer is dissatisfied okay now you noticed one thing in three paragraphs we found three answers so it's good we are safe now here uh, if we do true false not given we can secure six answers and most of them are going to be right and in list of headings well we'll just deal with that later okay okay now we have ielts reading part 4 sabko maine nair mein dhakka de dena darya mein de dena reading mein part 4 hunda hi nahi hai now we start with ielts reading part 4 carry on sir <laughs> we are fine <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, आप लोगों की मत मारी गई है सो इन रीडिंग वी हैव फाइव पार्ट थ्री पार्ट एंड टोटल फोर्टी एट क्वेश्चन फोर्टी क्वेश्चन वेरी गुड नाउ वी डू ट्रू फॉल्स नॉट गिवन एंड बाय द वे इफ टाइम इज रनिंग आउट एंड दे से कैंडिडेट्स वन मिनट लेफ्ट 
True, false, not given. 38, 39, 40, and you don't know what to do. All true. If you write all true, one is right. If you write all false, one is right. If you write all not given, one is right. Okay, so you got to fall. And don't do this thing, first one, taru. <laughs> false. Second one, false. Don't do this thing, okay? All true, all false, at least two to three answers will be correct. And not given, the proportion of not given is less. All true, all false, at least one to two answers will be right. And that will make your good band score, okay? Anyways, let's see. Question number 38. True, false, not given. Both businesses and people now listen in true false not given whenever they use the word both you have to check both things right if both businesses and people aim to order without really considering its value sorry both businesses and people aim at order order means everything should be in order if both businesses and people aim at order without really considering, second word underlined without considering, without its values. So if both people and business aim at order without really considering its value, what do they mean by its? Values of business, exactly. Answer is true without really considering. And if they consider business values, answer is False, right? Now let's go back. Business and people. Look for business and people. Business and people. Business and people. Business and people. Paragraph D for doctor, third last line. Found it? Business and people. And they're not very clever. They always give you a clue to reach the part of the passage because the game is not scanning, 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 and scanning. Okay? So, paragraph D, third last line. The result is that businesses and people spend time and money organizing themselves for the sake of organize, organizing rather than actually looking at the end goal and usefulness of such an effort true let's come back businesses and people aim at order without really considering its value now what is the word for without really considering its value exactly rather than the result is that business and people spend time and money organizing themselves for the sake of organizing organizing rather than actually looking at the end goal so rather than means without really considering its value. Answer is true. Question number 39. Innovation is most successful if people involved have distinct role. Now, distinct role is important. Distinct role means, uh, distinct means, you know, sometimes you say distinct means different. Yeah, it can be any other word. Innovation is most successful if the people involved have distinct role. Now, come back. Innovation. Look for the word innovation. F. F. Well done. F. Innovation is there. So the clue word was innovation. In fact, I'm reading paragraph F. Please follow me. In fact, research shows that when innovating, the best approach is to create an environment devoid of structure and hierarchy and enable everyone involved to engage as one organic group. One organic group. And there they say, involved have distinct role. Now, one organic group and distinct role, they are opposite things. So the answer is false. Question number 40. Google was inspired to adopt flexibility by the success of General Electric. Now look for Google and General Electric. Google and General Electric. Well done. Now listen. If Google was inspired to adopt the flexibility by success of General Electric, it is true. If General Electric was inspired by Google, it is false. And if they don't tell us who was inspired from home, then it is not given. Now I'm reading it. Uh, it's the uh, third paragraph of G. Second last paragraph. In similar fashion, 
The former chairman of Gen General Electric embraced uh, disorganizing, uh, disorganization, putting forward the idea of the boundaryless organization. Again, it involves breaking down the barriers between different parts of a company and encouraging virtual collaboration and flexible working. So the answer is we have not reached there yet. Audio challi nahi te answer das dita. So. Google and a number of other tech companies, are they comparing Google with General Electric? Yes. No, General Electric is over. Now after full stop, they are talking about Google Baji and a number of other tech companies have embraced at least in part these kinds of flexible thing, uh, structures. Now come back to question. Google was inspired to adopt flexibility by the success of General Electric not given they have not compared google with general electric they only said this thing uh, google and then what is the word for that and a number of other tech companies and a number of other tech companies so the comparison of google or inspired by this uh, general electric it's not given that is why answer is not given okay guys now finally we are ready for true false not given. Okay, sorry. List of headings here. Thank you. Teacher ki bhi mat mari ja sakti hai. Okay, list of headings. Now, you can see we've got different sections and for each section we need to find a heading. There are several ways of doing it. Uh, one way can be you go through section A. And for list of headings, we use a type of reading that is called skim reading. What do we call it? Skim. One is scanning. Scanning is not reading at all. Scanning is only searching. Okay. Then we have reading. Reading is actually reading and understanding. We call it reading comprehension. And one of these things is actually skimming. For list of headings, you are going to skim through the paragraphs. When you skim, you read first line carefully, then you read a couple of lines, or you skip a line, then you read some lines carefully, then you skip. So skip and read, skip. In skimming also, you have to read. But you will not read everything. Read a line, skip a line, then read a line, then read another line, then skip a line, then read another line, then skip, 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 read, skip, read, skip. This is what we call skimming so you need to do skimming for list of headings because you will not have time and one more thing whenever you read you need to read with pencil okay you know when you're reading something with pencil and you're moving the pencil your eyes will follow the speed of the pencil and you will read faster just try to read a line just try to read a line paragraph a first line without without putting your finger there just read the line That it? Okay, now read with pencil. Paragraph A, first line, huh? See that? Is your speed faster? Yes. So you should use a pencil, okay? Anyways, now, uh, let's just do one thing. We go through paragraph A. Please come to paragraph A. The first part is organization is big business. Second part is we have more strategies. They talk about time management workshops and this and that. We've read it already. Yeah, second uh, part or second paragraph of A. And third one is self-proclaimed perfectionists and all that. Okay, so now let's go back. Uh, we just focus this paragraph two. Uh, please come to uh, A, paragraph A, second part. We have more strategies for time management, project management, self-organization, and all that. We are told that we ought to organize our company, our home, lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. All the means to become more productive, and every week, countless seminars and workshops take place. Now, please come to list of headings. Okay, after reading one paragraph, when you come to list of headings, you will read them extremely carefully. This is your first reading and you will read them all and you will underline important words in the list of headings because you're going to match those words with the paragraph. Heading number one, uh, number one is misprint here. So please write number one. And for list of headings, you will always use Roman numbers. What is Roman number for one? No, 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 no. I. 
Roman number for two? I, I. Roman number for three? I, I, I. Okay? Like that. So you will write this Roman number. For list of headings, you will write Roman number. Okay? Let's see. Complaints. Underline the word complaints about the impact of certain approach. Complaints. Just underline that word. Heading number two. Fundamental beliefs. Underline fundamental beliefs that are in fact incorrect. Underline fundamental beliefs incorrect. Heading number three. Early recommendations. For that they usually use past tense. Early. Underline early recommendations concerning business activities. So early recommendations, business activities. Heading number four, organizations that put a new approach into practice. Underline new approach, organizations and new approach. Heading number five, companies that have suffered from changing their approach. Companies suffered changing approach. Got it? All right, let's go on. Heading number six, what people are increasingly expected to do. Does it ring a bell? What people are expected to do. We are told that. We are told that. What people are expected to do. What people are expected to do means. Logon se kya tawakko ki jati hai. We are told that we ought to organize our company. What is expected? Organizing our company. Our home life. What is expected to organize our home life. Our week. Our day. Even our sleep. And all that. So. For section A, heading number 6, what people are increasingly expected to do is the right heading. Got it? It's like this. By the way, if list of heading comes in section 1, it's easier than this. And headings are shorter. In part 3, it's just like this. Okay, now please do one thing. Cross heading number 6. What are you going to do? You are going to cross heading number Six, because you're not going to use this heading second time. This is already used. Okay, let's read seven, eight, nine also. How to achieve outcomes that are currently impossible. Underline outcomes currently impossible. Heading number eight. Neither approach guarantees continuous improvement. So, neither approach guarantees and continuous improvement. Heading number nine. Evidence. They will give you a proof. Evidence means... Proof that a certain approach can have more disadvantages than advantages. So proof uh, that a certain approach means certain method has got advantages, disadvantages. Now please come to paragraph B. And one more thing, one more thing. Whenever you are doing it, you just have to do one thing. The paragraph, which is the shortest one in the passage, and it has got a label A, B, C, D, E, start from there. Now can you see paragraph B? has got two options. Paragraph C is the shortest one. Then paragraph F is the shortest one. G has three sections. H is the shortest one. So start from the shortest possible paragraph and you can do it easily. Understand? Hmm? Now let's do paragraph B. Ironically, however, the number of businesses that fail has also steadily increased. Work-related stress has increased. A large proportion of workers from all demographics claim to be dissatisfied with the way they work in structure and the way they are managed. Okay, This begs to a question that uh, what has gone wrong? Why is it that a paper... Uh, why is that on paper the driver for organization... Sorry, drive for organization seems a sure shot for increasing productivity, but in reality falls well sort of what is expected. Okay, listen, do one thing. Please come to B first paragraph. Ironically, however, the number of businesses that fail has also steadily increased. Work-related stress has increased. Focus this thing. Underline work-related stress increased. Large proportion of workers from all demographics Claim to be dissatisfied. Underline dissatisfied. Work-related stress. Dissatisfied with the way their work is structured and the way they are managed. Now, match something with work-related stress, dissatisfied and all that. Complaints about the impact of certain approach. Okay.
All right, heading number one is gone there. So six is already used and one is with paragraph B. Now come to paragraph C. It's the shortest one. Paragraph C. And if the paragraph is short, read it all. Skim, read it all. This has been a problem for a while now. Frederick Taylor was one of the forefathers of scientific management, writing in the first, first half of the 20th century. He designed a number of principles to improve that efficiency of the work process, which have since become widespread in modern companies. So the approach has been around for a while. Just look for the word 20th century, first half of the 20th century, that is early recommendations concerning business activities. And what are the business activities? To improve the efficiency of the work process. Work process means business activities, which have since been widespread in modern companies. So because of first half of 20th century. What do they mean by first half of 20th century? Yes, they mean that. First half means 1950, right? 1950, okay. So for paragraph B, the correct answer is heading number, uh, sorry, paragraph C, correct answer is heading number? Three. three. Now, yes. Uh, okay, now tell me which is similar. Let's fourth heading. Fourth heading. Uh, list of heading number four. That is organizing that. Okay, listen, listen, listen. The word they are using the word new approach. Now, if you come over there, you can see they mention first half of the twentieth century. Now, this 20th century is something related to the past. It cannot be the new approach. New approach can be something currently, recently, most recent. So, the wording will tell you. Okay? All right. Paragraph D, please. Now, let's go on with it. New research suggests that this obsession with efficiency is misguided. The problem is not necessarily the management theories or strategies we use to organize our work. It's the basic assumptions we hold in approaching how to work. So new research suggests that this obsession with efficiency is misguided. Misguided means incorrect. Now find me a heading. Heading number nine is evidence that a certain approach can have more this no. Misguided. It's heading number two. Fundamental beliefs that are in fact incorrect. And what is the word for fundamental beliefs? New research suggests that this obsession with efficiency means fundamental belief is misguided. The problem is not necessarily in all that. So heading number two is the right answer for question number 30 and paragraph D. Let's go on. Paragraph E. What's more, recent studies show, listen carefully, whenever they use the word recent studies show, it means evidence. Recent studies show, it means? Now tell me one heading that shows evidence. Good. Recent study shows evidence. Now, if you go on and let's find advantages, a disadvantage, uh, this is certain approach can have more disadvantages. So, what's more, recent studies show that order actually has diminishing returns. Diminishing returns are disadvantages. Okay, so for paragraph E, heading number 9, and evidence. And for that, they use the word recent studies show. And for disadvantages, they use the word diminishing returns. Now, please come to paragraph F. In fact, research shows that 
when innovating the best approach is to create an environment devoid of structure and hierarchy and enable everyone involved to engage as one organic group these environments can lead to new solutions that under conventionally structured environments filled with bottlenecks in term of information flow power structure rules and routines would never be reached underlined would never be reached and look here when this is something would never be reached it means it is impossible would never be reached means impossible heading number 7 and what is that how to achieve outcomes that are currently impossible would never be reached means impossible okay then we have paragraph g f is done now we come to paragraph g and paragraph g has three parts so let's see what do they say in recent times companies have slowly started to embrace this uh, disorganization many of them embrace it in terms of perception embracing the idea of disorder as opposed to fearing it and in terms of process and all that let's come to the next one they they are giving an example let's read this example carefully for example otikon a large danish manufacturer of uh, hearing aids used what it called a spaghetti structure in order to reduce now sp spaghetti structure is one approach they used in order to reduce the organization's rigid hierarchies this involved scraping formal job titles and all that now find something and and let's the third paragraph in similar fashion the former chairman of general electric embraced disorganization putting forward the idea of boundaryless organization so they are talking about two new ideas they tried one of them is spaghetti structure and second of them is boundaryless organization now find a heading for this good spaghetti structure and boundaryless organization heading number 4 organizations that put a new approach into practice so what are those new approaches spaghetti and the other one boundaryless structure all right now we are left with yes two headings are left and one paragraph h a word of warning to others thinking of jumping on this bandwagon now they are going to warn us the evidence so far suggests disorder much like order also seem to have diminishing utility and can also have detrimental effects on performance if overused match something with it now we are left with heading number 8 and heading number 5 five. 5 five is companies that have suffered from changing their approach it doesn't match okay eight neither approach guarantees continuous improvement now tell me what is the word for guarantees continuous improvement come back a word of warning to others thinking of jumping on this bandwagon the evidence so far suggests disorder much like order now these are approaches disorder is an approach and order is an approach also seems to have diminishing utility and can also have detrimental effects on performance if overused so both do not guarantee heading number 8 neither approach guarantees continuous improvement yes that's right